Hey, so it's spring here in South Georgia. It's a cool spring. It's one of the coolest maids we've had in a long time. I want to give you a walk around the garden, show you what's going on, what's growing, what's different. Just kind of take a look inside the Hall's garden. All right, as you know, if you know much about me, I love to grow flowers. I always got to grow some flowers in the garden. So I got my binary giant mixed zinnias growing here. Now I like to grow some straight colors, some solid colors sometimes, but I'm gonna tell you this mix is my go-to. Got them, they blooming right now, and I'm starting to pick a few of them. Flowers just add a lot of zest to the garden. A lot of nice blooms, throw those pollinators in there. If you're getting attached, you can always go out there and pick you some flowers, care to the wife. On over here, I got me some okra going. This little row right here is jambalaya okra, which we love jambalaya okra. It's starting to grow. The cool nights here in May has messed with it just a little bit because okra loves the heat. But it's growing nice, got drip underneath it. Doing something a little different right here than I've ever done before. I had this cow panel up last year I grew my pole beans on. Well, I didn't want to move my cow panel. I already had my drip light there for last year, so I just cleaned it up and I planted me some slicer cucumbers and I'm gonna trellis them on this cow panel. On the other side of that, I've got something really unique that I am excited about. This is something that I'm not very familiar with at all. This is a Rosella hibiscus. And this plant here is known to put on some pretty flowers. It's similar to the okra and the okra family. It loves the heat. But I'm gonna grow this stuff here and it puts on a flower, but after the flower falls off, you got this big red, and they got a fancy name for it, but you got this big red cluster there. And you take that cluster and you peel the seeds out of it and you use it, you can dehydrate it, you can make teas, you can make jams out of it, you can do all sorts of things. It has a real bright red color to it and it is just full of vitamins and antioxidants. And there I got my peppers growing. My peppers have just been planted. They look a little weak, but they'll come along. Got to get some fertilizer on them, get that yellow out of them. It's kind of a late patch of pepper, but you always got to have some pepper in the garden. And then here we go right here, tater time. Tater time in South Georgia. My vines are starting to buy, die back. And you know what that means? That means it's time to get them taters out of the ground. That's probably going to be a fun little project this weekend. And right over here, of course, I got my onions growing. I'm growing a seed crop. A, I say a seed crop. I'm growing a crop of multiplying onions, and I'm doing some experiment with them. And that's my patch there. A little weedy, but they've been in the ground a long time. Having to keep them water tended to a little bit. And uh, you'll hear more about those later. I'm really excited about that. Got my tarp on here, using my tarp to put my ground in this spot here on standby. So when I get ready to plant it, just pull that tarp off, boom, it'll be ready to plant. This little spot right here is getting ready for some sunflowers. I'm gonna plant me some pro cut sunflowers in there. I hadn't decided yet if I'm gonna put them on drip or not, or if I'm on, uh, plant them and direct seed them or we're going to do transplants. I'm just kind of up in there that I may just direct seed them. I've had success with that before and just put them out there with an iron drip and overhead water them and get them up and get them going. Sunflowers are real easy to grow. I've done it. I've got some over there I grew from transplants, but in a pinch, if you got a spot left open there, it's something you go out there and direct seed, get them up and get them growing. Always add something to the garden. Now, right here is something special. This is a pole bean that we got from Mr. Jason over at Cog Hill. And it is a black pole bean. That's right, I said a black pole bean. Now Jason tells me it's a really good, you know, it, it cooks down to green. It's a really good bean. It's been in his family for years. He wanted us to try it, so that's what we're doing this year. Seems pretty vigorous so far. And what else but the lovely tomatoes. Got me two nice rows of tomatoes and my tomatoes are doing exceptionally well this year. We got brickyards right here and then we got Bella Roses right here. Now you see this white stuff there on the leaf? I threw me a handful of gypsum on there and it got on the leaf. So if you get putting gypsum on your plant, if you don't want them 
leaves scarred up just a little bit, you want to make sure you get them underneath there. And I tried, but if you get a bit on, a little bit on leaves, it's okay. Got to have that gypsum on them when they put that bloom set on so that you don't get that blossom in rot. I got tomatoes on here as big as a golf ball. Looks like we're going to have a good crop. Bella Rosas never fail me. This brickyard variety seems to have just a little bit more vigor to it. The plants are just a little bit taller. Jury's still out. We grew them last year. We enjoyed them. It seems to be one of the good varieties for here in the south. I got some leeks that's been in the ground for a while that probably need to come up. And then we got us some bush beans here. Bush beans are growing. I always love to have some bush beans. It don't take much of them. About a 20 foot row is about all we can have. So let's come on out here to the big area. We're growing another seed crop of the Cherokee tans this year. I just want you to look at those vines there. Man, these things have took off. Threw some fertilizer to them a couple of days ago, injected it into the drip line, and they are starting to go. Cherokee tans are, are fun to grow because you know they're insect resistant, they're disease resistant, they are pretty carefree. Throw them out there, stand back out of the way, or they'll grow over you. And I always love to grow me some watermelons. Got a sangria watermelons growing here. I got me two long rows there. Watermelons have not done exceptionally well this year. They're starting to take off. Uh, I don't know if it's been the cool weather or what, but it just had not been a watermelon spring. But hopefully they'll take off, start putting on some runners, and we'll have watermelons. Looky, looky here. Wow. Now, Travis, you're going to have to help me with the squash now. What's the name of it again? Algonquin. Algonquin. <laughs> Algonquin. Algonquin is a winter squash that we're growing this year. It's very rare, and we're growing it trialing and see if it's going to make the cut and see if it's something we want to put in production so we can make those seeds available to you. But first, we got to trial them. We got to make sure it's a good plant. We got to make sure it's a good fruit, and we're going to make sure that it's something that we think we should offer to you. So we're trialing two long rows here. So far, so good, man. It's a plant that loves to grow. It doesn't grow out and have a lot of long vines. It seems to me more of a bush vine to me. Flowers. Look at the flowers. So it's a growing good. The jury's still out. We'll keep you updated on that. Got me a patch of hickory king field corn. Not everybody loves roasting there, eating fresh field corn, but I do. And this variety here is my favorite field corn, hands down. Gets a big old long stalk. It'll get 12, 13 feet tall. Puts on a big old fine white ear. Man, that stuff is fine on the grill. It's a very insect resistant, drought resistant corn. I find that these older OP, open pollinated varieties, these field corns, are a lot easier to grow. They take less fertility, less water. They're a little more forgiving than some of the newer hybrid varieties. Now here's a couple rows of sunflowers that I did transplant. We have people ask us all the time, can I reuse my drip tape? Well, sure you can. So I had this bed left over from last year where the drip tape was laid. And I needed to utilize that area here. And I had a couple flats of sunflowers. So I just cleaned it up, turned my irrigation on, found out where my emitters was at. And I come back and I transplanted on each one of those emitters 12 inches apart. So I got two rows of sunflowers come along. And those are the pro cuts. Now right here is an okra that we're trialing this year. It's called Heavy Hitter. And we're going to see how it does. And we may offer it to you next year or a couple of years down the line. But we're going to trial it, see how it compares to the rest of them, see what benefits it has to offer. It come highly recommended to us. But of course, we want to check it out before we offer it to you. My summer squash, my zucchini, and my yellow squash are on their way out. We got a, 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 a crop in early. And we've harvested off of them. Man, we've eaten plenty of squash. But you can tell my vines are starting to go backwards. And our squash production is starting to play out a little bit. Next to it, we got those cucumbers. I got slicers on this end. I got pickles on the other end. I got clips down there. These, these cucumbers, man, they put them on. Look at all the blooms on them in there. We've been picking them like crazy. We always love fresh cucumbers. And here is my sweet corn. 
Avalon. It's one of those triple suites that we talk about. Planted it, it's doing wonderful. Got a perfect stand with it, got drip underneath it. It is growing like crazy. I just put some fertilizer on it the other day. I'll probably plow, hill it maybe one more time, but I better do it soon or it's gonna get away from me. So we got it growing, so we expect to have plenty of sweet corn this year. And there you have it, there's our garden. It's looking good, growing. We always got a process going on. We got plots going out, things going out. We have to pull up and clean up, and then we got new plots coming along. And if you ever have that situation where you don't know what to plant, you got a little window there where you got something that you don't know what to put in, always think about putting you some flowers in there. Great for drawing those pollinators and great for filling that void. And also they're good to look at. Never forget to plant you a rocking chair in the garden. Always take time, sit down, enjoy the beauty, enjoy the day, and enjoy life. Thank you.